is a special Listener Terrors episode with stories sent in by you, our Micro-Terror listeners. Send in your own story at microterrors.com. Welcome to Micro-Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine-tingling spooks. Micro-Terrors are family-friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night. And some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro-Terror. Zombified. Written by Ren, age 6. A boy was at school. He had to go to the bathroom, so he raised his hand and his teacher said he could go. He made his way down the hall to the boys' room. He looked in the mirror, but his reflection wasn't there. Staring back at him was a zombie. Its skin was gray. His features appeared to be vine-like. Its eyes were a shade of yellow and red. But the scariest bit about it was that it looked like the boy. But it also didn't look like the boy because the boy wasn't a zombie. He washed his hands and went back to his classroom. But when he got there, no one was in the room. The boy walked down the hall, but no one was around. He looked in the room next door, but no one was there either. Nobody was in the whole school. The boy looked out the window and he saw something towering over the houses. The towering figure looked just like the boy's reflection. It had grayish, vine-like skin and yellow-red eyes, but this was a massive zombie, taller than the telephone poles. The figure looked toward the school, and the boy noticed the giant figure had no pupils. It walked toward the boy, slowly, step by step by step. The boy woke up. It was just a nightmare. Whew. He was relieved. He got out of bed, looked out the window, and there the figure was, towering over the town. It looked just like the one in the boy's nightmare. The figure turned his head, looked toward the boy, and smiled. The Dream, written by Ibrahim Butt, age 11. Once about a time, Buzz was watching a scary movie, Ghost of Tibia. Buzz, 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 his mom said. Stop watching those scary movies. You know those movies give you nightmares. Come on, Mom. I'm 13. I'm not scared of anything. Well, let's see. Last time you watched them, you ended up getting scared and came into my bedroom and sleeping with... Okay! Buzz interrupted. Don't repeat that, especially not around my friend. Okay, Mom? C can you just go away, please? Because I'm trying to enjoy this movie with my friend. When you're enjoying shopping, I don't interrupt you, so, so please, Mom. Fine, his mom said. Just remember that I warned you. After the movie, Buzz said, Bye, John, as he closed the front door behind him. Bedtime, his mom said. Yeah, yeah, Buzz said as he went to his bedroom. Wow, the ghost is going to get me. I mean, get real. Buzz mocked his mother's warnings from earlier. Buzz suddenly woke up. Good morning, said Buzz to himself. He looked outside from the window. Wow, it's dark. Really dark. Wait, let me just go outside and make sure, Buzz thought. The stairs started creaking while Buzz went down them. Just gotta make sure Mom didn't wake me up. Buzz tippy-toed down the stairs, 
opened the front door. Creak! The door opened. Right in front of him was a light that shined in, but it was coming from within a deep, dark forest. Buzz started walking toward it, but when he thought he was getting closer to the light, it kept getting further away. Then it suddenly disappeared into thin air. Well, Buzz said, let's go back. Suddenly he saw his house door close. Huh? Buzz said, and then he felt a hairy hand grab him by the shoulder. He turned around and saw a six-foot-ten hairy guy with big feet and big hands. Ah! Buzz screamed. This is your worst nightmare, the monster said in a deep voice. Suddenly, a tree branch fell behind him. He got distracted and let Buzz go. Buzz ran toward a bush and jumped in it, hoping the monster didn't see him. Then he suddenly got dropped into a deep pit that looked like a portal. Buzz woke up. Buzz! Buzz, wake up! He woke up and said, Mom! Mom! You were right! I know, his mom said in the monster's deep voice. Buzz pushed the monster off the bed and ran outside. He had nowhere to go, so his only choice was the deep, dark forest. He ran into the forest with branches hitting his face, but then he tripped on a rock and fell in a bush. The last thing he saw was a deep, dark hole that he fell into. Good morning, Buzz's mom said. She went into Buzz's room and saw that Buzz was crying. She said, Buzz, are you okay? He said, yes, in the monster's deep voice. Then Buzz stood up to be a six-foot-ten hairy monster and ate her. The Krampus, written by Hamden Butt, age 13. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Brandon who hated Christmas. Every time the clock struck December 25th, he would wake up furious and only settle down if he got the things he asked for. These things were out of his family budget. Last Christmas, he asked for a costly console. He said, Mom, you'd better have got me the Game Play 7 or else I'll tell everyone that you're not a good mother. His mom replied, Brandon, I… that's… you know I can't afford that yet. My three jobs barely pay the rent. Maybe this year you should be appreciative of what Santa got you. Mom, says Brandon, I'm going to call everyone and tell them how bad of a mother you are, but you could change that if you get me what I asked for. Brandon opens his presents to see Elf Socks. Socks? Elf Socks? says Brandon. He's furious. He throws them at his mom's face and leaves the room. His mom sighs. This Christmas, when he woke up just as furious as every Christmas, he trots down the stairs heavily. Thumb! 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 But he sees no one. He only sees one present under the Christmas tree. The present is in fully black wrapping paper with a yellow sticky note attached on the top saying, Hey Brandon, I needed to leave early today. Enjoy your present. It's what you wanted. XOXO, signed Mom. Brandon says, Wow, Mom can't even afford festive wrapping paper. He laughs. He opens it to see an all-black box. He can't see inside it. He's confused, but then a blue hand jumps out of the box to grab his face. Brandon screams at the top of his lungs, Aah! but no one can hear him. He then manages to escape the mysterious blue hand's grasp and falls on the floor, terrified. The blue hand grabs one side of the box as another blue hand grabs the other. Then he sees two big red eyes rise up from the box. Then a six-foot-seven blue figure with a long red tongue, nails sharper than any knife, and a big black bag on his back. Brandon stutters the words, w -w 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 -who, who are you? The mysterious blue creature replies, Your nightmare. And then it laughs menacingly and walks over to Brandon while laughing. 
Brandon tries to back away, but the monster grabs Brandon's leg, dragging him towards it. Brandon screams. The monster holds him upside down as Brandon punches it in the face. The monster doesn't even flinch. It opens its mouth, then wraps its tongue around Brandon's neck. Brandon tries to breathe, but he's unable to. The monster opens his eyes to reveal them as red and glowing. Brandon turns pale white, and the monster then says, I just love the smell of fear, while cramming the boy into his big black bag. Then he eats the cookies that were meant for Santa and gulps down the milk. He leaves an all-black card with the letter K in red and sets it next to where the cookies and milk were. The monster then crawls back into the present, closing the lid over top while saying, Merry Christmas. Brandon's mom wakes up and goes up to his room to see a clone of Brandon, who is a better person. Brandon's clone says, I don't want a present, Bob. I just want to celebrate Christmas with you. His mom says, Um, who are you and where is my son? They laugh it off together and enjoy Christmas. This has been a special Listener Terrors episode with stories sent in by you, our Micro-Terror listeners. Thank you for listening to Micro-Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com, where we will also have spooky games you can print out and play, like wicked word searches, mysterious mazes, and more. Microterrors.com is also where you can find us on your favorite social media and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you'll learn more about our author, Scott Donnelly, who has other horrors for both young and old. I hope you'll join me again soon for Micro Terrors, scary stories for kids. Hey weirdos, be sure to click the like button and subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I post videos seven days a week. And while you're at it, spread the darkness by sharing this video with someone you know who loves all things strange and macabre. If you want to listen to the podcast, you can find it at WeirdDarkness.com slash listen.